Britain faces a choice. Do we squander the economic security we have gained, go back to the disastrous decisions on spending and borrowing and welfare that got us into this mess, or do we finish the job and go on building the secure economy that works for everyone? I say we stay the course, we stay on course to prosperity. Five months before the general election of 2015, the Chancellor George Osborne had his last chance to change the political weather with his autumn statement. But as so often with these statements, the question we really wanted answered wasn't that of what the Chancellor was going to say, but what the Office for Budget Responsibility was going to say about the overall fiscal position. And what we heard there was some good news and some bad news. Growth is higher than we had expected, 3% this year, although it is then predicted to fall away sharply during the next parliament. But very seriously for the Chancellor, the deficit is much higher. Having promised us he would eradicate it by this point of the parliament, George Osborne had to admit today that it is actually going to be £91.3 billion this year. This was the moment he had to admit Plan A hadn't quite worked. But what did he want to achieve politically? The first thing was to show that he cares about the NHS. Two billion pounds extra is what we heard that he was going to spend over this winter on the health service. Labour, however, accused him of fudging the figures on that one. Also, he wanted to show us he could be tough on big business, just as tough as Labour. 25% profit tax, he said, on big multinational companies. This will get known as the Google tax. And finally, the rabbit out of the hat by this very political chancellor was a major reform of stamp duty on properties. I think George Osborne has taken the opportunity to come up with a, a policy which I think will attract good headlines in papers like the Daily Mail, Daily Telegraph, the core Tory heartland vote. I think what's interesting about it is he's basically taken a model already being implemented in Scotland, but he's made it a lot less progressive. He's done a lot more to protect higher end property purchases than they are in Scotland. But I think business will, will be relieved by a lot of the, the stuff around the autumn statement, for example, the investments in roads, the investment in science, and George Osborne's boasting that capital expenditure in this decade, if the Tories are in power after the election, will be higher than it was under Labour as a percentage of GDP. So George Osborne's uh, plan for cutting the deficit has failed in his own terms. He was planning to eliminate the structural deficit before the 2015 election, uh, and now we're seeing the deficit still running at over £90 billion a year. Nevertheless, he says there's a clear path for eliminating that deficit and for the for Britain to be running a surplus by the end of the next Parliament, provided, as he likes to say, you stay on course with prosperity, and that means, of course, voting Conservative in the next election. I'm here on College Green after the Chancellor's autumn statement, joined by Stephen Hammond, Conservative MP, and John Healy from Labour. John, the Chancellor said his long-term economic plan is working, but figures from the OBR show that the deficit has barely fallen in the last year. Is it really working? Borrowing is going up this year and next year. It's going horribly wrong, and this is the this is the day I think George Osborne's main claim, and his to competence, his main promise, was wrecked by this autumn statement and the fine detail of those figures. And that is from a Treasury Minister who was part of a Treasury that caused this country to have the biggest budget deficit ever who had to revise figures to make it fit even in the good times, who ran a structural deficit for the 10 years when there was economic surplus in terms of GDP growth. It's extraordinary. No that, wrong, Stephen. Uh, uh, that is right. That's fact. Um, you can't get away from that. And I know that the Labour Party don't want to deny and don't want to apologise, but what we've seen today is a long-term economic plan that is cutting the deficit, that by 2020 the budget, well, in fact by 2018 the budget will be in surplus, it will be healthily in surplus by 2020. Uh, and I think a lot of people will want to contrast that to Mr Ball's statement today. You seem to have no idea idea about where he's going to find any of this money, particularly the 166 billion he's proposing to extra spend. But what do Britain's newest political insurgents make of all this? Well, I think they're, they're, there's a cosy cartel of Conservative and Labour almost propping each other up. And I asked the Chancellor if the economy was doing so well, why are we borrowing more than France, Italy, Spain and Greece? And yeah, he'd like just to be able to blame Labour. But I think he has to take some responsibility for the massive increase in spending on overseas aid, the European Union and renewable energy. It's time to make some savings in those areas. One thing that UKIP does agree with, however, is the Chancellor's move to try and stop big multinational companies avoiding tax by simply shifting their profits abroad. The question is, what do the companies make of it? The 25% profit tax for where there's profit shifting 
I think this is quite a big issue for many big corporates and I think lots of corporates will be scratching their heads about what the effects will be. It's not so much that the government's made a tax change. I think what will frustrate many large companies is that they've done it unilaterally. We're in the middle of negotiations with the OECD to get profit sharing sorted out across the advanced economies. The government may think it knows where those negotiations are going. Business would have preferred it to be done internationally rather than unilaterally. Businesses, home buyers, taxpayers all now spend the next few days and weeks scouring through the detail of the Chancellor's statement trying to figure out what it exactly means for them. For the politicians themselves, the big picture is this. The deficit is still here and it is still high. But while that may be a failure of George Osborne's, the problem for the opposition is that they have yet to prove to voters that they are the ones to be trusted to fix it. Kieran Stacey, Financial Times, London.